Gamekeepers understand animals and the world in which they exist. For those that struggle with the concept, meet headkeeper David Whitby. He surrounds himself with many of the animals he spends his professional life controlling. Brock is the resident badger, treating Lisa and David's home as his own. Then there's the terrorist. If he can break it, if he can kill it, he, he will. I mean, he was, he was actually, you can probably note his one wing hangs lower than the other. He was picked up in the park, somebody's dog mauled him as a chick, as a fledgling. And um, just uh, an incredibly intelligent animal. He completely rules the dogs. He's just the devil incarnate, but I absolutely love him. Over the coming weeks, David, one of the forefathers of the National Gamekeepers Organisation, will show us how he manages this estate in Sussex, its wild deer and park deer, how he deals with the dynamic nature of the 2020 shooting season. Get them to park there. Lisa's going to bring out bacon sandwiches and tea, disposable everything. And some of his alternative techniques. Let's start with dogging in. Like all driven pheasant shoots that release, you're pushing back, you're dogging in, you're knocking birds back from your boundary. And some years ago, we tried this man who flies a goshawk. It works terribly well. This is Trudy, my faithful partner. There you go. How old Trudy? Trudy's three, so she's just a baby. She's been working, working with me now for about a year. Um, so she's had one season under her belt. And so she's still learning her trade, but she's, she's coming along nicely. She's Stella, she's three year old now, and she's a, a female Finnish goshawk. We'll get her kitted up with her transmitters. Few keepers allow falconers to fly their ground, and if they do, it's usually at the end of the season. David allows it throughout the season and sees it as a symbiotic relationship. It's more effective than a, than a mad spaniel or labrador knocking birds back into the middle. This really does terrify the pheasants. Uh, and it's a little while before they venture out again, whereas you can push birds back with a dog and they'll be back out again half an hour later. Not so much the case with a bird of prey. They, um, they push them well back into the middle and someone else is doing it while I'm sitting with my feet up having a cup of tea, which is always good news. As uh, a lot of falconers will know, getting access to ground is very, very difficult for us. Um, but David, I always call him one of, he's one of the enlightened ones. <laughs> and we tried, but probably about 10 years ago now, we tried what we're doing now. And um, it works well for both of us, it really does. Um, I obviously get to hunt my bird. And I'd like to think I'm providing a bit of a service to David. He seems to think it, uh, it doesn't do any harm and he, he does say it benefits him. I never find loads of birds, you know, on, a, on an average outing, I'll get two or three flights, which is all we're looking for. One or two birds a day really is, is ample. Some days I'll catch one, some days we don't. And it's, uh, yeah, it's great. It's fantastic for me. To get the ground is, is very, 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 very difficult nowadays. So it works well for both of us, hopefully. Hey. Come on, Trudy. Paul gets some hunting and the pheasants head back home. Not because they're terrified of the goshawk, although they have reason to be, but thanks to the presence of hawk, human and hound. It's a miserable day today. On our first visit to meet David, it was glorious. Perfect conditions to show off his cover crops. It's a cover crop for game birds, but on the back of that, so many other species that need this, that need this, are thriving. And that's just one of the many benefits of shooting that um, we should be pushing forward. You know, cover crops, and there's a vast acreage of cover crops. When you've got the right thing in, and it's not just for pheasants, but it's for a whole host of creatures that need help, that need food, that need cover, be they insect or be they bird, this is what we've got, and this is what we're putting back into the countryside. It's lovely, and a lot of shoots do this, but you're thinking holistically. There's, there's joined up thinking here, because it's not just about 
the game bird, is it? No, for goodness sake, no, it shouldn't be. Uh, look, I'm not saying that the shooting world is perfect, far from it. We've got a lot that we've got to put right. But we're managing the countryside. The people that we work for have managed the countryside for centuries. They know what they're doing. Theirs is the bigger picture. They're not thinking about their lifetime. They're thinking about their children's and their grandchildren's lifetimes. They will inherit a thing of beauty. They are very anxious that this thing of beauty, this estate, continues to be a well-managed thing of beauty. And of course it has to wash or try and wash its face financially. But the most important aspect here is the wildlife, is the countryside, is the whole ecology of this area. That is man-managed, but well man-managed. It's really, really a special place. And this is one of many estates that can thank not just the people who own it, but it can thank the field sports that take place on it when they are done correctly. And by correctly, that means that game birds are a part of it, they're not all of it or most of it. Your shoot is kept so that it is ecologically balancing and beneficial and not detrimental. And that's the important aspect that we've got to get right in shooting. This is where the guns would normally be meeting. However, at the time of producing this film, the Prime Minister has announced a new lockdown in England and our planned shoot day with David on the 16th of November 2020 is unlikely to proceed. Back to the boundaries and Paul is frustrated we haven't made contact. Yeah, that's it, that's it, we call it a day. When I see her pull off them like that, she's, that's it, she ain't in the mood. She hasn't flown particularly well today, but as you can see, she still gets her food, she still gets her reward at the end of the day. She'll have the head and neck of a pheasant when she, when she does make a kill. Which, on today's performance, <laughs> looks like we could be in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> I am going to apologise, so we got it a little bit wrong today. No, no, you But talking great. to David, he's quite, he's quite happy with what we've achieved. I'm sorry that we wasn't successful, but can I just point that's out falconry, here? isn't it? Can I just that's falconry, here? Dave. I didn't want you to catch anything. I know, well, I'm delighted, uh, but you pushed our boundaries in. Fantastic. That was the whole idea of the idea. The idea. And if you could just assure me that no gas or goshawks ever catch anything, that would be Mine true. don't. <laughs> Mine don't. <laughs> but I know peoples that do. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, we're stalking wild deer and enjoying the rutting spectacle of the park fallow. For more information about the Sealand range of clothing worn by David and his team, go to gb.sealand.com. <laughs>